Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another day of our video devotionals. Uh, I've been having such a wonderful time going through these scriptures. Uh, I've really enjoyed uh, everyone's different takes. I uh, loved having a couple guests last week uh, and love the, the book that we're studying. So thanks for diving in with us. Today we are in the book of Acts in chapter 7, uh, moving into chapter 8 now. A quick recap. Uh, yesterday, Pastor Casey talked to us about Stephen and, uh, and, and how he was martyred. He actually became the first martyr of the church. Uh, and that was a very significant moment for the church. Uh, that was a huge catalyst for what we're about to see for the rest of the book of Acts. It was a catalyst. Um, it was a turning point. If you remember before Jesus ascended into heaven, when he appeared to his followers, after being crucified, he gave them the great commission. He said, go and make disciples. Uh, and he told them where to go. He said, go into all the world. Start here in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the other parts of the world. And so he gives us this picture of, of just this spreading out. Start centrally, then move out a ring, then move out another ring, and then go everywhere. But up until this point, the church really was just centralized in Jerusalem. Uh, to this point, the you know the, the the disciples are preaching and they're doing miracles in Jesus' name under the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, but they haven't really gone out yet. And this event, the stoning of Stephen, changes all of that. This event causes them to have to move on. So let's read and, and hear what it says here. Chapter 8, verse 1. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church, going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Verse 4 says, Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. And that's where we're going to stop with the reading for today. Uh, and that's the portion that we're going to look at. Uh, Saul of Tarsus was a ruthless persecutor, and this is where he got his start. We see him first. Uh, Luke tells us that he consented to the, the killing of Stephen, meaning he was there present. We know that from that point on, he became the central leader in the persecution of the church. And it says that he went house to house, uh, you know, just out to destroy the Christians. This great persecution is is very uh, tough to hear about. To think that that we wouldn't have the rights. I mean, I know as Americans, that is such a um, a concept that is unfamiliar to us. Many of us are going through this quarantine, feeling like, what? When is this going to end? You know, we live in America. We need to be free. We need to be able to walk out. And you know, well, I urge you, if you're getting antsy, you know, please, I I, I urge you to continue. Uh, obeying the law of the land and to continue just putting up. I know it's tough, but hang in there. Uh, but but you just remember, it was nothing compared to what this church, the early church, was facing. Uh, they weren't just being constrained and their liberties, you know, restricted, but they were being persecuted for being followers of Jesus. Um, but here's what happens with persecution. Because of the persecution, it caused the church to scatter. And when you hear that word, scatter, you're, you tend to think divided. You tend to think, um, you know, the impression that it gives is something like weakened. Like the church was weakened because they had to divide and split up and, and be alone. But that's not really the word that's used here. The word that's used to describe or to, to, the word scattered in the Greek 
is the word diaspora. And diaspora, yes, it gives the picture of scattered, but it really is scattered as seeds. Uh, and so I know right now many of us feel scattered. Don't look at being scattered as weakness. Look at it as being planted. Look at it as an opportunity to take root and to grow and to bear fruit. Because that's what the disciples did. That's what the followers of Jesus did here. This is how the church went from Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria. It took persecution and sometimes it takes pressure uh, for us to, 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 to leave our comforts. Sometimes it takes uncomfortable circumstances to do things that we otherwise would have never done. I wonder what would have happened to the church had they not experienced the persecution. That's not to be insensitive again, you know, towards the people who were persecuted, that lost their lives, that lost their, their land and their loved ones. Um, you know, I don't want to be insensitive of that, but I do want to take that to say in our lives, when we're uncomfortable, those are times that God moves us and, and he doesn't move us to weaken us. He moves us to strengthen us. So I hope that you feel strengthened today. I hope that you take a moment to, to feel those roots uh, take uh, a little bit more, you know, uh, or, or for your root to take root in the soil uh, and reach deep to receive that water and nourishment that you need so that you can continue on your journey of growing in God. So let's pray and, uh, and let's conclude today. Father, we just... We thank you for every situation in life and how you use it all to move us according to your will. We see, God, how this persecution caused the dispersion of the group of the church. But it wasn't for the sake of weakening. It was for the sake of strengthening. It was for your heavenly purposes, for your eternal purposes. So, God, today we understand that this quarantine period and the things that we're dealing with at home, the challenges at work, uh, the, the struggles even financially, they're not meant to destroy us. Yes, they may. They, they may uh, feel dividing, like they're, they're dividing us, but God, help us to see that you're planting us and you're, uh, you're helping us to take root so that we can produce in your fields. We thank you for this. In Christ's name, everyone said amen. Thanks again for joining us. Leave some comments and questions, and uh, we'll see you on Friday. God bless you, church.